you know? So we need to repent if that's us tonight. Amen. Don't ever compare your life to somebody in the world. Don't, don't start getting upset and angry because you see somebody that is ungodly and uh, getting all these riches and fame and, you know, maybe a new outfit every day or, you know, success and popularity. Man, don't, don't do that because they're not going to the same place. They're not going to the same destination. We have to suffer. We have to. It's part of our walk with God. There's no way out of it. And if you think that getting out of it by leaving and not living for God anymore, that's not the answer. Because after all this suffering and testing and all that, we're going to face a place that no one can really express or explain on this earth because it's so beautiful and it's so amazing. And it's so, you know, it, there's not going to be any pain, no suffering there. Now, there is a place called hell. People can choose not to suffer, not to walk this walk of suffering Anybody can choose not to walk this walk of suffering, but later on, there's going to be an eternal suffering. I'd rather face my suffering right now Amen. than eternal suffering. Right, yeah. Amen. Amen? So we got to get our focus right if it's not right, you know? Um, now, again, God didn't say this road was going to be easy. He never said that. When he went up to um, the disciples, they weren't disciples yet, but he went up to them and said, hey, come follow me. Did he guarantee anything? I mean, did he tell them how much, you know, I mean, they're leaving their, their work, you know, fishers of men, you know. They, they didn't ask no questions. They just followed after him. And that's the way we need to be. We don't need to be saying, you know, well, um, how many blessings am I going to get for following you, Jesus? You know, what, I'm, what am I going to get out of this? How, how full is my bank account going to get? How, how famous are we going to be? No, that's not it. That's not it. We follow him to know him, to love him, that he would be number one in our hearts, that he would be our most cherished, our most valuable, you know, everything to us. Amen? And, uh, and no matter the cost, no matter the cost, amen? Now, our faith is recognized when we're tested. It's not a one-time thing. It's a journey. It's a lifetime journey. Amen? Amen? And it doesn't get easier. Okay? I've been in this for a little while. And let me tell you, it does not get easier. Every test gets bigger as you pass. Now, you want to pass. Okay? You want to advance. You want to go further. Okay? Amen? It's going to get so narrow. So narrow, you're not going to be able to take anything with you. You're going to have to be stripped of yourself. Amen? All of our flesh. Our flesh is not going to be able to pass through. Okay? Everything. Everything. It's like, uh, how can I say? We're going to have to, like, pass through the eye of a needle. That's how intense it's going to get at the end, right before we enter into heaven. It's going to be that intense, that narrow. Amen? It's going to be so narrow that it's going to seem so impossible to pass through. Amen? But when we put this 
superpower this faith to work, it's possible. Amen? All things are possible. Amen? With God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's go to Matthew 17, 20 real quick. Matthew 17, 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to, you, to yonder place, and it shall remove... And nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing. Isn't that an awesome scripture? Now, this scripture was given because the apostles came to Jesus because they could not cast, um, they could not cast the devil out. Okay? And, or not, I don't want to say devil, but the, let me see up here real quick. Um, Right here. And I go up to verse 16. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Okay. Well, I guess I was right. It was the devil. Okay, he rebuked the devil, and he departed from him. Amen? Now, in Luke 17, 6, you don't have to go there, but it says the same thing, but it says a sycamore tree. You, uh, you can command the sycamore tree to be uprooted and cast into the sea, and it will obey you. It will obey you. Okay? So, huge obstacles and situations or circumstances are going to come, and we'll have to have faith to overcome them. Amen? But I also saw this when I saw this today. I also believe that this speaks of demonic powers that rise up against us. And with faith, we command them to be removed and cast into the sea. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to need that. Now, there, there was a, I was like, okay, God, I pray, God, that you remove the mountain. Remove it, God, and move it out of the way. And I believe that I heard him say, you command it. You command it to move. Amen. It's by faith. Hallelujah. Just like the disciples were supposed to command that devil to come out. Command to come out. Amen? Now, it's going to get intense. Like I was talking about, go to Luke 22 real quick. 31. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said to Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath Desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both unto prison and unto death. But listen to Jesus' prayer for Simon. He says, I pray that your faith fails not. Amen. We need to include that in our prayers because this time is coming. Yeah. Satan does petition at times right. to sift us as wheat. Right. And I don't see right here where Jesus said he told him no. I see that Jesus prayed for him and said, I pray that your faith does not fail you. Wow. Amen. And I see this like an end time scripture right here. That in the tribulation time, okay, when, the, when God's going to allow the Antichrist to rise up and the devil to work through him, guess who he's coming after? He's coming after the church. 
And I pray to God during that time that our faith will not fail. That's why right now, while we're being tested, while we're going through things, we need to overcome. We need to pass the test right now. Because every time we pass the test, our faith will increase. Amen? And, and we will be overcomers. And we can endure to the end. Amen? Hallelujah. So I never saw that before till today in that scripture. You know, and I praise God for that. Um, that's why we need to pass. Now let's go to James 2.26 real quick. Mm -hmm. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. All right? We must put our faith to work. Amen? There are some awesome examples in the Bible on faith. Now, I can't go over all of them because there's uh, quite a few, but there's a few that stand out to me. Of course, everybody's probably thinking of Abraham, right? <laughs> Father of faith. Amen? Um, he waited years and years and years for his promised son, Isaac. Now, Abraham had faith from the beginning, from the time that God told him to leave, you know, uh, where he was from to another place that he knew nothing of. He was a stranger in that land. That took faith for him to go. It says it in Hebrews 11. You can read it. Hebrews 11, 8 through 19. There's Abraham again. It took faith for him to just get up and move where God told him to. he never been there before. God sometimes will do that to us. He'll say, all right, it's time to move. Okay? Amen? Now, um, so Abraham has his promised son Isaac, right? And God tells him, you know, to sacrifice him, to put him on the altar, right? Sometimes God will ask us for our most cherished so that he can become our cherished. Amen? So Abraham obeyed God. He did what God told him to. Now, he could have responded differently, right? Just like you and I can respond differently. He could have said, God, but I, I waited for him for so long. I mean, he's my promised son. And, and now you want me to put him on the altar? I don't think I can do that. You know what? No, I'm going to rebel against you, God, and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep my son. But he didn't. He didn't do that. He obeyed God. And he was tested, and he passed the test. Amen? And he's known for his faith. Sometimes God's going to ask us to put something on the altar. Amen? And, and it might be something that we waited for a long time. And we finally get, get it, and then God says, put it on the altar. And that's what we need to do is respond like Abraham. He's the perfect example for us, you know, of, of how faithful he, was, he is. Amen. Amen. I just got to look at my time. All right. Um, another one, Esther. Okay. Her life was on the line. But by faith, she approached the king. Right? And she said, if I perish, I perish because she was obeying God. Now, sometimes, you know, if it comes to that, to obey God, even if our life is on the line, then so be it. Remember Esther. Amen. And because she went by faith, the scepter was held out to her. And she said, they're trying to kill my people. I need you to know that they're trying to kill my people. And they're going to they're gonna be attacked on a certain day. Now, the king couldn't stop the attack. He already had his signet on there, right? So, um, but he was able to add um, a law that would protect them. Amen? Where they could defend themselves. Now... 
I know that they had victory. Amen. Now, if an attack actually happened on that day, I don't know. You know, but it did. You know, the attack, when the attack came and they protected themselves, I can't tell you if there was no losses because there probably was. There probably was. Amen? So, um, now, um, I got just a few more minutes. Um, the woman of Canaan, the Syrophoenician woman, in Matthew 15, you don't have to go there, but her daughter was vexed with the devil, and she saw Jesus, and she was very desperate for her daughter to be healed or delivered. And Jesus, she approached Jesus, and Jesus, you know, practically told her no, because he didn't come. He, he said he came for the lost sheep of Israel, and she wasn't part of that group. But she had faith in him. And she asked again. And he said, no, it's not meat for me to cast, you know, my bread that I have for them to the dogs. He actually, you know, um, most people will probably would have got offended then, right? <gasps> Can you believe what they called me? You know? I mean, Jesus literally called her a dog. But she responded by faith. She wasn't even in the church. She wasn't even in Israel, you know, part of the lost sheep of Israel. And, and she responded by faith. And she says, you're right. It's not meat for me, you know, you know, but that's all I need. All I need is a little crumb. That's all I need. And God was like, you know, Jesus was like, you have some great faith. Wouldn't it be awesome that if God looked at you and looked at me and said, oh, what great faith. I have not seen such great faith in, in all of Odessa, Texas. Amen? I want to have that kind of faith. You know, Rahab, you know, um, in Jericho, she had the prostitution house. Okay? And the spies went there. And this is what I'm saying. We should not put God in a box. You know, like pastor was preaching, don't put him in a test tube. Don't be, you know, we can't limit God. You know, the, the spies went to Rahab's house. You know, I could already see some saints right there. Oh, I cannot believe they went there. Cannot believe that they went to Rahab's house. What kind, of, what kind of, you know, godly men are they? You know, but God had a plan. We must obey him no matter what. This is, I'm going to tell you, Rahab had faith. She wasn't even in the church yet either. Okay? And she said, I've heard what God has done for your people. I've heard how he parted the sea. For y'all to cross through. I heard of the mighty works and the acts of God. And so she hid them. And she led a way of escape for them. By faith. Because those soldiers came to her door. And she could have just cowered down. You know, because when we don't have faith in God, we cower down. We get full of fear. And we crumble. And we don't respond right. But they came to her door. And she protected them. And the outcome of this was that her and her whole house were saved. Amen? We're examples too. Just like you and me. When we had to get baptized in Jesus' name, or we had the opportunity, right? We heard in God's word, in order for us to be saved, we must be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. But we need to repent first. It takes faith to say that prayer of repentance and believe that God is forgiving you of your sins. But it's real. Amen? And then after we repent, then we take that action to get baptized in Jesus' name. And by faith, we get filled 
with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in other tongues. So, you know, when we did that, we began this journey of faith, this lifelong journey of faith. It doesn't stop there. Amen? So we're examples of this. And uh, in closing, Matthew 8, 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them, that followed, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Amen. Please stand. This centurion, his faith marveled Jesus. Isn't that awesome to marvel him with your faith? You know what moves God? Faith moves God. In every one of these instances, when they had faith, he moved, cast out the devil. He moved, they got healed. Amen? Hallelujah. So I want to be like that. I pray we're all like that, you know. Um, the centurion, he was like, just speak the word. Just speak the word. And that's what we need to do. Just speak the word. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Tonight we're going to uh, pray. Lord God, I pray let our faith increase, Jesus. Let our faith in you, O oh God, not fail in a time of testing, Lord Jesus. Increase our faith, I pray, O oh God. I ask, Lord Jesus, for the gift of faith to be imparted in us. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would marvel you with our faith and that we would put our faith to work and that our faith would marvel you, Jesus. Hallelujah, that we would just believe and speak your word in every situation, every circumstance, oh God. You be made manifest, you be seen, you be heard, my God. Hallelujah. And Lord God, if there's any kind of uh, bitterness or anger or rebellion in any one of us, Lord, I pray repentance tonight, Lord God. I repent, Lord, if any of that is present in me. And I pray, God, that anyone in this house that might have that present in them, that they would repent and that you would redirect our faith to you. If our faith is not on you tonight, I ask you, Lord, redirect our faith towards you, my Lord, towards your word, oh God. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. You are our help, Lord God. You are our shield and our buckler. You're our rock and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? I praise you tonight, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your awesome word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is you, O oh God, that causes us to triumph, O oh God. By our God, hallelujah, we have ran through a troop and leaped over a wall. We praise you, O oh God. We are victorious in you, Lord God. We pray, God, to make it to the very end, to make it through that narrow, narrow place, Lord God. Hallelujah, that we would be stripped of ourselves, Lord God. And that we would continue in you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God. I give you all the praise, all the glory, and the honor, Lord God. You're so good and you're so faithful, Lord. You have never failed, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We love and appreciate you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.